Hey guys, so I just thought I'd make a quick video because I received an email earlier today and there's a load of free OpenVDB files available from a company called JangaFX. Uh, these are the guys that make Embergem, which uh, presumably is what they've used to create these uh, simulations in the first place. So I'm going to try one out in Blender and if you want to follow along, I'll put the link in the description below. I'm um, going to use this gasoline explosion. So once you've downloaded it, unzip it and then inside of Blender, we can just do, let's delete this monkey, Shift A, and then we'll do Volume and Import OpenVDB. And then I've already got this here, so these are the VDB files you're going to get. Press A, select them all, and then Import OpenVDB. I'm going to add a camera as well. Let's go to the viewport over here, end panel, and just say Lock Camera to View, so it can move around with that camera. And then I'll go into the camera view. Let's zoom out a bit, see if we can find this VDB. Let's play it back. All right, so there it is. I'm going to zoom out a bit more. And I'm probably going to need to change the clipping on the camera. So let's go into camera properties. And we'll just change this to something like, I don't know, 2000. Should be all right. Yeah. It's probably a bit wide as well. Let's just play back the full animation. And if we look at the volume data in the panel here, you can see we've got 131 frames. So I'm going to change that to match inside the animation output as well. 131. Oop. 131. The width I can get away with not so wide. So let's change that down a bit. Somewhere about here. Somewhere about there then. Looking, looking pretty good. All right. So what you need to do next is if you go into rendered view, can't really see much because we've not got any light being produced in the world environment. So in the shaded panel, go into the world section and shift A, S. I'm going to put down a light path node and then I'm going to put down a mix RGB node. So once you've done that, plug the camera ray into the top, into the factor, and we want the camera, so that what appears to the camera wants it to be black. We plug that in there. You can see now we've got a black background and the light, the white area, is going to be illuminating the smoke. All right. So let's go across to the object now. And there's no material on this at the moment, so I'm going to say new. And that's going to automatically generate a, a principal VDB shader, which we can then use to add the flames. So inside the VDB properties, you can see we've got density, flames, and temperature. So we're actually going to use temperature, which is already usefully set up for us and also the density as well so all we need to do is increase this black body temperature something like 10 and then increase the temperature to something like i don't know 4000 should be quite good and if we play this back maybe we go to about here you can see we're going to be getting that fire and smoke uh, rendered in for us let's just make sure i'm in gpu mode all right, so I want this to be rendered onto a transparent background so that I can use it in something like either Photoshop, After Effects, or, I don't know, DaVinci Resolve, you know, that, that sort of program. So I'm going to go across to the render settings, and I'm going to change it under the film area, set this to transparent, and that will ensure that the output file has got an alpha channel so that we can place this fireball over the top of something else. So I just need to make sure in here that we choose a format that will support the alpha channel. So we can either use PNG, uh, OpenEXR, uh, and various other formats. But I'm going to go with PNG in this tutorial, just because I won't be actually doing any compositing with it. Okay, and then we'll have it as 8-bit should be fine. Compression, that should be fine. And I want to save it, so we're going to do File, Save as, Gasoline Blender. All right. Save that, and then I'm going to choose to save this into the root folder of the blend file. All right, so that's going to create a load of PNG files. All right, so I want it to render really quickly. So let's go across into the render settings and under the, let's just minimize viewport so I don't accidentally put it in the wrong place. I'm going to put this to 0 0.5, really low settings. Uh, max samples, I'm going to have it something like 12. And then min samples, maybe go with one. All right. 
turn the denoiser on. I'm going to be using the open image denoiser, and this should give us a decent result. And then let's go across to the compositor. We'll turn the use nodes on. Use alpha. And I want to just test to make sure it's decent quality by putting down an alpha over node. And basically this will give it, it will put a white background behind the flame. So just move this one down to the bottom. Okay, so let's do a render. So F12. Let's zoom out. And uh, let's have a look. So obviously this is looking quite noisy. There's far too much uh, sort of pixelation around that smoke over the white background. And this is why we chose to put it over a white background, just so we can see how many samples we need. So let's just save this one as um, 12 samples. All right, so let's try increasing this. And let's maybe put it down to... Let's put it down to point zero 0.01, and we'll put this up to maybe, I don't know, let's go with 1024. Uh, 0 .0, let's go with 0 0.015. We'll give this a go. So render, turbo render, or turbo tools render. Don't worry about this. Uh, basically, I'm using an add-on called Turbo Tools. Um, and this creates a caching system so that you can take advantage of all these additional things like we've got compositor caching, uh, resave file output nodes or recreate file output nodes without having to re-render and then a full publishing system and also playback in the uh, compositor itself as well so we can do real-time compositing but if you don't have turbo tools don't worry it's uh, just press f12 and it won't create this cache node it will just hook up the existing render layer node to here. So let's see how long this takes. <clears throat> Last one was nine seconds. So we're already on a minute. Let's zoom in and uh, just have a look. So I can still see there's quite a bit of noise in there. Make this full screen. So currently on one minute and five. I'll probably speed it up a little bit now, actually. All right, so that finished in uh, one minute, 41 seconds. And unfortunately, it's still quite noisy. So I think just for the sake of the video, because I'm on quite an old graphics card, a, a GTX 1070, I'm actually going to use, um, I'm not going to use the standard denoiser. I'm going to use the turbo render instead. So don't worry, if you don't have this, all you need to do is just increase the samples a little bit. Uh, make sure you're using the denoiser, obviously, which I was just then, and it still gave me this noisy result. So let's go to turbo op options for this, just for the video. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm on high mode for the volume, very dirty, and I'll just enable the emission, the volume, and then the emission that's behind the volume as well. And this basically tells the turbo render what it needs to clean up. All right, so let's try this one. I'm going to actually, I don't want to wait nearly two minutes, so I'm going to change this back to 0 0.5. Uh, and I'll maybe put this on something like, I don't know, like, put it on 16. I'll put this on to zero, in fact. All right, so we can turn this denoiser off now. Let's try this one. So this is going to be turbo. And render F12. Oh, that's that's way better. So 15 seconds, and we've got no noise at all. Just compare this. So what you're trying to get rid of is, you see the sort of noise in the smoke there? If you're going to put this over a, a background, such as, um, I don't know, maybe a sky, you don't want all this pixelation in there, otherwise it's going to be really messy. So just increase the samples until you've got rid of all that. I'm going to stick with Turbo Render because it's only uh, 15 seconds, much quicker. So go back to the previous. And what I'm going to do is render this out now. All right, so we'll do Control F12 to render the animation. 
And that will output it to wherever we chose to save it over here. Let's have a look. And if we go across to the folder, you can see that these images are going to start appearing one by one. And one thing I forgot to do, in fact, let's just cancel this, is get rid of this alpha over. So if you just mute this, we don't want the white background. That was just for testing purposes. So do a render again, control F12. And then these should start getting overwritten in here. So you can see this is coming in at currently five seconds of frame uh, during this period. It'll take a little bit longer, around about 15 seconds, I think it was, as we get to this stage up here. Let's just make sure. Yeah, it's denoising, so that's good. Just want to check I've got everything set up in the turbo render correctly. Yep, yeah, that's enabled. Set to high. Yeah. Excellent. So I'll leave that for now, and when I, when it, when it's finished, I'll come back and we'll uh, we'll see what else we can do with it. Okay, so that finished in around about twenty minutes, pretty quick. Uh, let's go back and have a look then. So if we play this back, view published animation, or if you don't have Turbo tools you can just go into the render up here and view animation that'll do the same thing let's have a look so you can see we've got the animation in there now and it's on a transparent background which basically means we can take the png sequence which we've got here uh, and take that into any other third party compositor and then we can do things like for example let's say i do it in here so let's change this to turn the alpha over back on Again, don't worry about this node here. This is just a cache node. If you're using a uh, standard uh, Blender, you'll just have this render layers node in there. What you'll need to do instead, because you won't have this cache, is bring in this image sequence and then plug this into the bottom in there instead. All right. So what we can do is bring in another image. All right. And we plug the image into the top. So now instead of having a white background, let's just add a viewer node so we can see what's happening here. Let's maximize this window. All right. We'll increase the size of this a bit. So if we play this back at the moment, you can see we've got this in here. Um, we want to resize this. So obviously it, the flame, the explosion is coming out of the lady's buttocks. So let's... Um, reposition this shift a s i'm going to do a transform we'll put this here and then just to make sure it matches the right size we're going to do a scale and we're going to make this to be the render size there we go all right so we're going to move this downwards we want to get this flame lined up with the lady's uh Kravis. let's put it about what about that? I think I want to scale up a bit as well, actually. Let's uh, change this to by cubic, make it a bit smoother. Uh, that's a bit too much. Let's go with uh, maybe around about here. And I want it to fill the entire size, so let's move that a little bit more. There we go. Something like this. And we'll move it back up a bit. Somewhere about there so it's coming right it's right coming right out of the crevice let's play that back boom and there we go and obviously the fire is going behind that lady's leg it, it should be going behind that lady's leg but it's going in front of the lady's leg that's no good let me just change this let's go with there we go render size that's better let's move this up a little and then across Let's go back to, let's go to the end frame. Let's get that flame just positioned nicely. There we go. That's, that's pretty good. Let's play this back. There we are. Now, obviously, if you don't have turbo tools, you won't be able to play back in the viewport. So you'll just have to follow along instead. And um, you've got your PNG sequence here in the bottom that you've brought in as, a, as an image. So this will be, instead of a single image, this will be an image sequence. And then you've got your image, whatever you want. And now you want to perhaps make sure that it doesn't go 
over parts of the image it's not supposed to. For example, this leg is in front of the fire. So let's just show you how to do that. We're going to the image editor. Let's bring that down a bit. And we want to change this from view to mask. And if we just control click, we can see we can add these in. So let's just move these across. We're going to go back a bit to about here. And I want to draw this around the lady's foot. In fact, let's just play it back so we get to a spot. There we go. And we need to add a mask as well. So Shift A, S, I'm going to do mask. I'm going to plug this mask into the alpha over factor. We've only got one mask, so this one, F, this uh, mask here is the only one in the scene. So play this back. We need to invert it. Shift A, S, invert. Drop this here. And now, if I take this and start clicking around, you can see in the viewport over here, we're starting to get that not covering the uh, the leg anymore. Click this one. I'm not doing a great job, obviously. All right, so play this back. And now you can see it's going behind the lady's foot. Um, it's not lined up quite correctly, so let's just do it, eyeball it in this window. Now we can make these curvy as well if we want to. Just right click on them and choose um, whichever one you want. Maybe go with the line. And then we can choose this. We can rotate those around. Do the same with this one as well. Make this one aligned as well. Maybe scale it out a bit and then rotate it. All right, that's the basic idea. So I'm not going to do a great job. You can, you can fine tune it. All right, and then we can play this back. Let's go full screen again, bring that down. Let's change the backdrop size a bit, somewhere about there. And play this back, and there you go. What we can do now is um, you can then render this out again, uh, or if you've got Turbo Render, uh, Turbo Tools, sorry, you can use the Turbo Comp Publishing options. And all I'll do, I'll just go into the output again and I'll change this to be in a folder called bum explosion uh, bum explosion so the folder is going to be called bum explosion and the file is also going to be called bum explosion and I think I'll make this instead of a PNG sequence I'll make it an FFmpeg and then if I do publish animation it's going to create this ffmpeg for us pretty quickly you can see it's shooting through the frames there there we go and bring that up and there's the end result so thanks very much i hope the video is useful if you want to know more about turbo tools as well this is my add-on, by the way, that I'd created. So if you want to if you want to get that, not only will it give you much faster renders and all these compositing tools, but it will also support the channel. And more importantly, it will allow me to achieve the main goal, which is to create a full series of videos aimed at training somebody, a complete novice that knows nothing about 3D to the point where they can actually get a career. And the reason I want to do this is because when I was starting out, and I couldn't afford to go to university, I got a mortgage and things like that, about 25 years ago, uh, there was a guy called Jason Busby who had a website called 3D Buzz, and he created this massive series completely for free. And he basically, you know, it was, it was, it put a lot of people on track to get a career. And that's what I want to do as well. And that's the reason for the add on it's so that it can hopefully provide enough funds for me to be able to dedicate. A large amount of time to take all the information I've acquired over the last 25 years uh, regarding 3D and then use Blender as a way to teach that in a structured way for people that can't otherwise access that sort of education to give them a chance at a career as well. If you want to get it, 
download it. It's available at 3d-illusions.co.uk and it will support the channel and obviously help me achieve that main goal. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bums away.